Hi. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, <laughs> That is the face of bliss. Look. It's a happy dog. Aww. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Mr. Happy. Oh, a happy dog. Or just a happy, happy, happy dog. <laughs> Look how happy he is. Yeah. Look at hey. the wagon chair. <laughs> Hi, hello. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> same spot that we were last night we've layered up a bit more today um, it's not as windy but it's still pretty chilly um, we are still on the hunt for the pink footed and um, some red billed chuffs but we have seen the hooper swans quite nice and close this morning so we're co going on down again to see if we can take a closer look so where we are at the moment we're on um, peatland which if you don't know what peatland is um, it's a type of um, sort of earth, I guess, which is geologists will probably kill me for saying that. Um, but it's from my rudimentary knowledge of it, it's something that's built up over thousands and thousands and thousands of years, um, and it's used as a carbon sink. So um, that basically means it's really, really good at absorbing carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. Um, so it's incredibly important for climate change and you might have seen before that there are like sometimes there can be peatland fires and it's a big problem because it releases um, CO2 into the air and um, they have to be very very wet so if they dry out too much um, they can burn and the thing is they keep burning underground because there's so much gas stored underground um, and in Ireland there's a big big problem of um, people harvest the peat to um, to basically fuel their homes um, because it's a natural resource here um, and it's kind of readily available but the problem is it's not like um, wood where you can you know you can plant some like there's certain types of wood that are quick growing you can chop them down you can grow them again um, peatland is there's basically people have tried to study peatland restoration and there is no way to restore it that people know of yet. So once it's gone, it's gone. And there's very, very few parts of peatland in Ireland which haven't been damaged. We've been to a couple and there's some really, they're really small areas that, that haven't been damaged. Um, so this is quite a good spot to show you exactly what it looks like. Let me turn the camera around. So you can see all the black here, um, all of the black Bits. that's basically where it's been dug up is quite uneven ground and you can kind of see where they've they've dug tunnels of the peat um, and you can see like down here it's really really wet um, and that's where where all the water that the peatland would usually absorb it's it's now just kind of here um, and then they store it in oh wow, oh, wow. Snipe. Snipe. they were just here yay oh that's exciting Snipe are very elusive. They're wetland birds that basically you will only see, they're so well camouflaged that you will only see them if they fly away, if something scares them and they go. Um, so it's quite exciting to see them. They're great. Um, get two types of snipe in the UK. You've got the common snipe and the jack snipe. Um, that was probably a common snipe, but we couldn't really tell because it went really quickly. But anyway, back to the peat for a second. You can see, so they basically cut it into these blocks and they leave it here to dry. And then when it's dry enough, that's when, that's when they sell it to people to kind of power their homes and stuff. So yeah, it's a big, big problem. Um, and it's still something that's kind of being figured out and tackled here. I'd say that's probably one of the big 
climate issues in Ireland and, and a lot of parts of the UK um, and other sort of similar habitats um, or countries with similar habitats at the moment. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's just to the left of it. What, down here? Over there. Ah, over the there. Other side. We might have got the goose. Alvin has seen something very goose-like on the opposite side and it's got a dark head which a pink-footed goose has so we may be in luck we're just trying to ID it a little bit further and see yeah we've got the pink-footed goose it's feeding oh, on the other yes. side yes we're a bit far away but I've managed to get a shot hang on. I can put the reflection of my hats in there there we go Oh, that's so exciting. That's brilliant. Let's see if we can get a little bit closer. Yeah. See if we can so see it a got, little bit better. We've got eight in lapwings down there. We've got some hooper swans in the lake and we've got the pink footed goose on the other side feeding. Not a bad start to the day. Yeah, it's a bit unusual to see a pink footed goose by itself. It's um, quite lonely. Yeah, it, it looks quite lonely. They're usually found in flocks, so this one has obviously got separated and now it's just sort of here, not knowing where its friends have gone, not knowing which direction it's supposed to go in. Um, yeah, because they're normally um, uh, found in Iceland, Greenland and Svalbard and, and normally they winter in uh, parts of Northwest Europe, such as uh, Denmark and the UK. Yeah, but Ireland is a little bit out of its range. They do winter in the UK, but usually they don't... Um, sort of find themselves as far across as Ireland, especially this far west of Ireland, because we're kind of the most westerly point, really. Um, Hopefully it finds its route back yeah. and uh, find its, it finds its route back home and uh, yeah, poor thing. joins uh, a flock of its own. Yeah, it does really not look like it knows what to do with itself. Yeah, yeah it's been sighted <laughs> earlier this week, so it's been here present for a few days. Mm. And yeah, we got to see it this morning, which was very, very good. Yeah, and we're here for another couple of days. So I think we're going to head off now because it's right over the other side of the lock. Um, so we're going to head off now to try and see some of the Red Bull Chuffs. So we've been told that there's a flock of around 30 um, that sort That's of... Normal in the area. Yeah, and we have seen a flock of around 30 corvids in the distance. So it could be them. We're going to try and find out. Um, but we are probably going to come back just to see if we can see the pink footed a little Close. closer another day.
Alvin's got them. Yeah, they're just over there. I can see five at the moment, but I'm pretty sure there's more. So let's park up and take a walk down then. Yeah. See if we can get closer. Alvin and I are watching the strangest wren that we've ever seen. There's, um, there's a little river that runs down to the beach here. I forgot to say, we're in Keem Bay now and, um, and Alvin spotted a wren that's basically behaving like a dipper and just hopping around was, all of the rocks. It was very close to the water. Yeah. It was just having a nice little drink. And it's going under rocks. Yeah. Oh, I just saw it again. It moved. Oh, there it is. It came out. Oh, yeah. Look at it. It's so cute. Oh, there it is. Gone to have a drink. Yeah. Oh, it's just hopped oh. over. Wow. Having another little drink. 
This is a very aquatic wren. Where did this go now? It's still under there somewhere. I've never seen a wren acting like this before. No, neither. Oh, there it is. It's right at the bottom. It's in, it's in the, oh, there it is. I can see it moving. Yeah, it's gone back again. Oh, there it is. Oh, there it is. It's on the rock. Whee! So cute! <laughs> 